What's up my pre-calc people? In this video, we're going to tackle topic 1.11 or topic 11, 1.11, whatever you want to call it. Now this topic is huge. It's actually got a lot of different stuff in it. It talks about how to understand different forms of rational functions, how to identify vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, slant asymptotes. It talks about long division, which is what we need to find slant asymptotes. And then also talks about the binomial expansion theorem. So there's actually a lot going on, but in this specific video, I want to start with talking about long division, how to actually perform long division, when to perform long division, and what it all looks like. Now, when we perform long division, we're taking a function f of x divided by another function g of x, and they're both polynomials. f of x by itself is a polynomial, g of x by itself is a polynomial. Now, there's one really important rule that has to be true for us to actually do everything that we're going to talk about here with polynomial long division, and that is that the numerator's degree must be bigger than the denominator's degree. Okay, awesome. As long as that's good to go, we can actually perform polynomial long division. Expressing the result of polynomial log division is really, really important. It actually kind of comes in two different forms. So if we have f of x divided by g of x, we could express our final answer as f of x equals g of x times q of x plus r of x. Now, f of x is, of course, our numerator. g of x is, of course, our denominator. q of x is going to be the quotient, the result of the polynomial long division. And r of x is going to be any possible remainder through that process of polynomial long division. Now, another way that we can express this exact same sentence, f of x equals g of x times q of x plus r of x, is to divide everything by g of x. Now, that would produce f of x divided by g of x equals the quotient of x plus the remainder of x divided by g of x. Now, why would we maybe want to have this different form? Well, remember, the original problem says, hey, what is the result of f of x divided by g of x? And if that's what we're actually looking for, the result of f of x divided by g of x, we would actually prefer this form because this form is telling us what f of x divided by g of x is. And that is, of course, going to be our quotient, q of x, plus any remainder, r of x, divided by the divisor, g of x. All right, let's dive into several examples so you can actually see how all of this process works out, what long division actually looks like with polynomials, and how we can express our result. All right, so in this first example here, we have 2x cubed minus 3x plus 5 as my numerator, and x minus 4 as my denominator. So the first thing I notice is I can use the polynomial long division because my numerator's degree is bigger than my denominator's degree. Numerator degree is 3, denominator degree is 1. Now, to set up the long division, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my long division bar which hopefully everybody is familiar with the long division bar. Now inside is going to go the uh, dividend, the numerator, but I have to make sure that any power that's skipped gets replacement with a zero. So I do have a 2x cubed, but I don't have any x squared, so I'm going to put a 0x squared in its spot. Then I have a negative 3x, and then I have a plus 5. And the divisor is going to go on the outside, x minus 4. All right, now I'm going to go through the process of performing long division. So the first thing I have to ask myself is how can I turn the x right here into a 2x cubed? And of course, you have to multiply by 2x squared. So I'm going to put that 2x squared in the x squared column. Now I'm going to multiply x times 2x squared is 2x cubed. Negative 4 times 2x squared is negative 8x squared. Now I'm going to subtract, and I like to actually circle the minus sign to like double remind myself I need to subtract, because that is one place where kids make a lot of common mistakes. So 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0, or, or not, I don't even need anything there. 0x squared minus negative 8x squared turns into a positive 8x squared. Bring down the negative 3x and the positive 5, and let's start the process again. How do I turn an x into an 8x squared? Multiply by 8x. I'm going to add 8x. Okay, x times 8x is 8x squared. Negative 4 times 8x is negative 32x. And then once again, I'm going to subtract. Put that minus sign and circle it. 8x squared minus 8x squared is 0, so no more x squareds. Negative 3 minus negative 32. Come to the side if you need to actually see that. Negative 3 minus negative 32. It's actually going to turn into negative 3 plus 32, which is going to be a positive 29x plus 5. And then lastly, I'm going to ask myself, how do I turn an x into a 29x? I'm going to multiply, or excuse me, I need a 29, so I'm going to multiply by 29. So 29 times x is 29x. 29 times negative 4 is negative 116. 
Now, the final step is to subtract one more time, and that's hopefully not too, too bad. And we have 29 minus 29x is 0. 5 minus negative 16 is going to turn into a positive 121. Now, I cannot turn an x into 121 because I, I, there's nothing to multiply by that could create that. So that tells me I'm done. There's my remainder, and here is my quotient. So now to walk through the couple different ways that we could express our answer. We could say that the numerator, 2x cubed minus 3x plus 5, equals the divisor, x minus 4, times the quotient, 2x squared plus 8x plus 29, and then plus any actual remainder, in this case, 121. Now, it's kind of cool is that you can actually check your work by multiplying all of this out and then including or, or combining the 121 into that multiplication, and you should get the numerator, f of x. But the other way that we could express this is if we divide everything by our divisor of x minus 4. So I'm going to get 2x cubed minus 3x plus 5 all divided by x minus 4. Now that was our original question. Our original question was asking what this is. So that's why this final answer makes a little bit more sense. So we're going to divide all of this by x minus 4, and those x minus 4s are going to reduce to a 1. So we just get 2x squared plus 8x plus 29. And then we also have to divide our remainder by that divisor of x minus 4. So we get plus 121 over x minus 4. So this is where we get our answer of our quotient q of x plus the remainder, r of x, divided by your original divisor, which in our case was g of x. And that's what is the actual answer to the question of what is 2x cubed minus 3x plus 5, all divided by x minus 4. So that's the process of long division. Kind of fun, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> all right, here is our second example. So once again, inside of our long division bar is going to be the 3x squared minus 5x plus 7. I don't need any fillers this time because they're all there. A square, an x, and a 0th power. Then we need that x minus 4 on the outside. Now again, let me remind you one more time, the top degree is bigger than the bottom. That is why I could, of course, perform this polynomial long division. All right, how do I turn this x into a 3x squared? I'm going to multiply by 3x. That's going to get me 3x squared minus 12x. And then subtract 3 minus 3 is 0. Negative 5 minus negative 12x is going to be positive 7x. And then drop down this 7. Then start over. How do I turn x into a 7x? I'm going to multiply by 7. 7 times x is 7x. 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. And I'm going to subtract all that. 7x minus 7x is 0. 7 minus negative 28 is a positive 35. I cannot turn an x into a, just a regular 35. There's no x's. So there's my remainder. And there is my quotient. So once again, the actual answer to the original problem is going to be the quotient 3x plus 7 plus the remainder, if there is any, in this case, remainder is 35, divided by that original divisor of x minus 4. So that's the actual statement right there. Again, you can multiply everything by x minus 4, which cancels this out. And then you have 3x plus 7 times x minus 4 plus the remainder of 35, because back there the x minus 4s will reduce to a 1 as well. So this is, I'm not sure if there's a preference here, but this is actually answering what the question is asking when it says, hey, what is 3x squared minus 5x plus 7 divided by x minus 4? All right, let's look at a third example here. All right, so let's start off with that big old fraction bar. So I have a 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 3x plus 7. I got my third power, my second power, my first power, my zero power. Now on the outside, I do need a filler. So I have an x squared. I have zero x's and then plus a 6. So I do like to put that filler in there. It does help me through the multiplication process. All right, so now I'm going to ask myself, how do I turn an x squared into a 2x cubed? I'm going to multiply by 2x. So I'm going to put a 2x in that 2x column. x squared times 2x is 2x cubed. 0x times 2x is 2, oh, excuse me, oh my gosh. Uh, 0x squared, I almost wrote a 2 there. 0x times 2x is 0x squared, or just 0. I don't even need the x squared, to be honest. And then 6 times 2x is going to be a 12x. All right, then all of a sudden, sorry for my messiness there. I'm going to subtract everything. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0, nada. 5x squared minus 0x squared is 5x squared. Negative 3x minus negative 12x is negative 15x. And then that 7 drops down as well. All right, how do I turn x squared into a 5x squared? I need a 5. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times 0x is 0x. 
and 5 times 6 is 30. All right, and then I'm going to subtract everything here. So 5x squared minus 5x squared is 0. Negative 15x minus 0x is negative 15x. And then 7 minus 30 is negative 23. All right, so I cannot turn an x squared into a negative 15x, so I'm done. Here's my remainder, and here's my quotient. So again, if I want to actually answer the question in terms of what all of this was, I'm going to equal the quotient 2x plus 5 plus my remainder of negative 15x minus 23, all divided by the original divisor of x squared plus 6. So there would be my final answer. I could actually factor out that negative that's common on top here, and I could turn into 2x plus 5 minus 15x plus 23, all divided by x squared plus 6. Just a different form you can see, maybe it's multiple choice, because that negative that we see right here and right here can be factored out, making this a minus sign and turning that into a plus sign. Now, I do want to do two more examples with you. The reason why I want to do two more examples is there's lots of different tiny little tiny things that can happen when you're performing polynomial long division. So the more examples you see, the better prepared you're going to be. But if you're kind of getting the gist of it and you're a little bit bored maybe, then feel free to fast forward to the end. But I do want to do two more examples right now. All right, and here's our next example. What we're going to do first is we're going to create that long division bar. Now, I need lots of replacements here. So I need the x cubed, but then I don't have any x squared, so I need a 0x squared. I don't have any x's, so I need a 0x. I don't have any plain old numbers, so I just need a 0. And then same thing on the outside. I need an x squared. I need a 0x and a minus 9. Now I could perform my polynomial long division. How do I turn an x squared into an x cubed? I just multiply by x. x times x squared is x cubed. 0x times x is 0x squared. And negative 9 times x is negative 9x. And then now I'm going to subtract everything. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. 0x zero squared minus 0x squared is also 0. And then 0x minus negative 9x actually turns into a positive 9x. Now I can't go any further because I cannot turn an x squared into a 9x. So there's my remainder and there is my quotient. So the original problem, x cubed divided by x squared minus 9 equals the quotient of x plus the remainder 9x over the original divisor x squared minus 9. But don't forget, there's the other form of this line as well. I could say that the numerator x cubed is the quotient x times the divisor x squared minus 9 plus the remainder of 9x. It's all going to get me the same final result. It's all the same understanding, just two different ways of looking at it. All right, and one more final example here. We're taking negative 2x cubed plus 8 divided by x plus 2. So once again, in that division bar, we're going to have a negative 2x cubed, 0x squared. I need a filler there. 0x and then the plus 8. And on the outside, just a nice x plus 2. All right, so here I go. How do I turn an x into a negative 2x cubed? I need a negative 2x squared. x times negative 2x squared is negative 2x cubed. 2 times negative 2x squared is negative 4x squared. And then, of course, I'm going to subtract. I really like circling that minus sign because so many kids make their mistake there because they, they, they don't think about the subtraction. They end up doing some silly math wrong. So negative 2x cubed minus negative 2x cubed is 0x cubed. 0x squared minus negative 4x squared is a positive 4x squared plus 0x plus 8. All right, how do I turn an x into a 4x squared? I need a 4x. 4x times x is 4x squared. 4 times 2 is 8x. And then I'm going to subtract again. 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. 0x minus 8x is negative 8x plus 8. How do I turn an x into a negative 8x? I need a negative 8. x times negative 8 is negative 8x. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. And then I'm going to subtract. Negative 8x minus negative 8x is 0. 8 minus negative 16 is a positive 24. There's my remainder, and there is my quotient. So I could say the original problem that was given to me is equal to the quotient, negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 8, plus the remainder of 24 over the original divisor of x plus 2. Or, of course, I could just write negative 2x cubed plus 8, that's the numerator, equals the divisor, x plus 2, times the quotient, negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 8, plus the remainder of 24. Now again, which way do you want to express it? All depends. Read the question. Some questions will just say, what's the divisor? What's the remainder? And you always have to just focus on that. But again, two different ways you could actually express that final answer. All right. That is another great example of polynomial long division. 
All right, that's it for polynomial long division. Hopefully a couple of examples made sense to you and you could see not only how to do it, but all the little tiny, tiny details that go into it as well as to how to express your final answer. Now, what I'm gonna do in the next video that I hope you're gonna watch is how to actually use polynomial division to find a slight asymptote in a rational function. So stay tuned.